Hi everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel, Zero One Tech. Some of you may know me as underscore zero one underscore, and that would be from the Nerf subreddit. Uh, the rest of you may know me as Jean, that's French for John, uh, J-E-A-N, as in Jean-Luc Picard, or Jean-Claude Van Damme. Uh, today, I want to share with you a project that I've been working on, and that is the Tacticade body kit for the Nerf Barricade. Uh, here it is, here, in all of its glory. Uh, still working on some of the finer details, but I want to share some of the major components. So right here, this section, we have the main body kit. It consists of a rear section here. There is a top rail, which secures to the front end. There is a muzzle and then a pin. Uh, the pin here is just for cosmetics. It doesn't do anything um, other than look cool or tactical. Um, and then on the end, we have a muzzle with the... Uh, with the accessory attachment point, uh, so you can use any standard Nerf attachment. Well, almost any. Uh, the retaliator front end will interfere with the pin, but the front pin can just commit. Alright, so attachment. Another thing about the front end, or the muzzle, is that the inner diameter is the same as the outer diameter for the Nerf uh, inner barrel, so you can put a uh, barrel extension. There's a tactical rail on the bottom for a front grip and a Picatinny rail on the top. Same thing on the bottom, Picatinny rail, 20, 20 millimeter standard. Um, so yeah, so you can use your airsoft or other accessories as well. Uh, on the sides, you can see it here, there is a tactical rail. And there's one that can go on the other side as well. Uh, also, there is the battery box that I've been designing. It's designed to hold larger uh, LiPo batteries and it has a quick disconnect so you don't need a screwdriver to open it up. So there you have it. There is different wiring or different spots so you can put wires through so you don't have to cut through your battery box or if you want to use your battery box uh, for standard batteries and have a secondary power supply you can do that or you can rip wires in it put in a microprocessor uh, but that would you would only need that if you're doing things like putting in an automatic pusher kit the select fire. Uh, that might be in the works down the road. Uh, so yeah, you can route the wires through here, or here, or here, or here. There's also points on the battery or on the box. So you could put a sling disconnect here or a, and a voltmeter here. Let's talk about the, uh, the stock that I've been working on as well. Uh, it's a standard mil-spec uh, buffer tube style stock. Uh, 29 millimeter in diameter tube. And yeah, uh, and it actually mates up to the. Um, so it actually mates up to the uh, the Nerf stock attachment. Uh, there are a couple of there's a piece, two pieces uh, that have tabs on them, and they lock into. Let's see if you get a look there. They lock into the attachment points in the stock, so it makes a very secure and snug fit, and then you can quickly disconnect it. Uh, by undoing this quick disconnect here. It's basically a nut that locks a screw into place inside of a 3D printed part. Um, you don't need a screwdriver, it's not as quick as the Nerf disconnects are, but uh, it's still doable without tools. Uh, yeah, the stock is uh, pretty neat. I think it's neat. Uh, it has Picatinny rails in it. It's fully modular, so you could turn it, uh, you put cheek rests, which is in the work as well, and an extension on the back. Uh, it's fully adjustable. Yeah, don't you love that sound? 3D printed parts sliding on each other. Anyway, there you have it. Locked into place. Turned out quite well for a first print. Uh, still need to do a bit of work into it. So next, uh, we're going to change from this view, and we're going to open up the blaster and show you how the kit fits. So here we have it. Here's the blaster. Uh, most of the screws have been removed, so it won't, you don't have to spend half the video watching me uh, take screws out. Okay, first we're going to remove the battery box. You undo the cover, there goes the plate. And out it goes. So it just fits neatly inside of the tray or where the cover goes. 
so that there isn't any cutting of the exterior shell to make this work. So here's the box itself. Nothing too fancy about it. So next we're going to detach the stock. And to do that, there is the quick, uh, quick release or quick disconnect. It's basically a 3D printed part um, with a spot for a nut on the underside of it. Yes, it would probably be easier to use a hex head uh, for that. You can see it there, so that just threads in. And you can use a little, little bit of Loctite so it keeps it in place and you don't have to worry about it uh, coming undone. So for the stock, everything is held in together by springs. Not held together, it will uh, push apart from springs. That way you won't have these little tabs. You won't have the little tabs that are stuck in here. Um, the problem that I have right now is that my sh the screws are too short, uh, so it springs up. Yeah, so you can't unscrew it a bit and then take the uh, the stock off. Uh, the stock itself, it's my design, uh, modeled after Worker. So you could originally say it's their design, who modeled it after whomever a mil spec requirements. So anyway, it's a mil spec mil spec stock, fully adjustable, and. This mechanism comes apart. It's just basically a pin that's actuated by a little pin actuated by a lever and it's spring loaded to keep it in place. There you have it. All right, on to the main kit. So for the kit, it's five pieces. The front end here, there is the rear end top rail, the barrel, and the pin. This is the first edition or uh, first make of the kit. So there will be some revisions. And all that's really holding this together are two pins or two screws up here. One of them is practically stripped from all of the uh, assemble, disassemble. So here's the top rear, top rail. And the reason why it's done like this is so if you have a smaller printer, it could be printed using it. So there's the top rail and two uh, screw holes. Those are 3M screws, so metric. Uh, and those are 12 millimeters long. And so the top rear here just slides right off. And in order to make this piece fit, you need to cut out these notches here. And, and on the rear, you'll need to uh, you need to cut that down so it will slide over. So now we can open this up. And this comes right off. So here's the real part of the kit that makes, I find, the biggest difference. It's the front, it's the front end. Uh, it was a lot of fitting and measuring to make this work. There were a lot of, there, there were many uh, little pieces that, many test pieces printed. To ensure that it fit perfectly um, and so it just slides right out in order to make this work with your blaster there's a piece here that you'll have to cut off and the piece up here uh, for the for comparison there's the uh, protrusion here this whole front part is removed and taken out and this will have to be cut down uh, point of note when you're disassembling your blaster uh, this is welded together so it will not easily come apart, you will have to force it apart. Or you can just cut it down, and you won't have to cut it later. So there are some of you which received a uh, beta release of some of the files, so you could print them at home and provide some feedback. Uh, a couple things that you want to note uh, when you're printing. Uh, the orientation is like this on the print bed. Uh, so that it only requires a minimum amount of support material. Of course, it's not printed with the muzzle in place. And there are four different types of muzzles. Uh, there are two with the uh, accessory attachment. And there are two that are called a wide bore. If you take a look down there, if you can see it, uh, it's designed to mate with the buffer tube or the standard Nerf tube. Wide bore. Uh, it's basically hollowed out where you see that ridge uh, that's removed. And that way it reduces barrel drag. But if you're into a more tactical looking blaster or if you do 
uh, if you are a live action role player, uh, this might be the look that you're looking for. Uh, there's also a snub nose version, uh, which is has a much no end strike attachment, and is much shorter. Another thing that you will have to do, which I uh, which happened here, if you have the uh, the first gen parts, you'll need to bore this out a bit with a with a drill bit, and that way uh, that way you reduce the uh, reduce the chances of the print cracking. Uh, the lines of the print run along this way. And it's just set up perfectly to split if you apply too much force. Uh, the reason why you would, uh, yeah. So the whole point of this screw is to keep your muzzle in place. And inside of the muzzle, there are there's another hole of which it'll line up, and that will just lock it in place. And that way, you can actually change out your muzzles if you want to, uh, but you'll have to disassemble the whole blaster to do that. Uh, that's. Pretty much it for the uh, the kit. I have it listed in its current state, not this kit itself because there's a deep uh, a crack in it. Uh, I have it listed on my Etsy page. Uh, the whole plan or the whole point, not really the whole point. Uh, one of the things that I'm doing with the product is that each one gets an individual serial number. Uh, just kind of inspired from the real steel uh, firearms out there, everything gets a stamp. Uh, I have a stamp on it, on it, so the pieces that get stamped are the front end and the top rail here. Uh, this is X1T for 01 Tech, B1, that is the, uh, the designation for the barricade, and this is the addition A, or revision A, and then this is kit number 5. Uh, there is the option of personalizing them, uh, personalizing that, uh, the last three, it could be a number set or it could be... Uh, something personal. Uh, my personal blaster is going to have 01 on it, uh, but other people have put in their, their Reddit names or something that's a little more personal to them. I will probably continue offering that service in the future, uh, but we shall see. It probably will just be uh, serialized and through production. Uh, the next gen kits are going to be Charlie, so C, B1C. Uh, because B was used for, uh, there was another intermediate shape as well. Well, that's it for the video. I'd like to give a shout out to Josh from Valor's Blasters and Joe M from the Facebook Nerf Modders Welcome Group uh, for providing feedback and support during this project. I'd also like to give a shout out to Michelle from Foam Blasts uh, for providing a bit of insight into the, uh, the Nerf, uh, the business side of the, uh, the Nerfing hobby. Also, a uh, big shout out to my supporters on the Nerf subreddit, uh, the Straya for the Win, uh, Foam Munition, Horse Rogue, and Aphrodamus2234. Uh, thank you for watching. Also, check out my Etsy shop. I'm currently shipping just inside of Canada, but I plan to expand uh, globally uh, later on in February. So you just uh, check it out, see what you like. Uh, you can message me if there's things you're interested in, so I make sure that uh, there's plenty of stock for my global launching. Uh, once again, thank you for watching, and that's all.